Good morning, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Jennyville, Illinois. Let's get started. Uh, do anybody have any announcements that they'd like to share? Sharon. Oh, uh, Sharon Rogers will be uh, having surgery Tuesday, and uh, so we'd like you to keep her in your prayers. Okay. Any, any, anything else? Uh, today, you need to get your. Uh, hope everybody brought their uh, angel tree presents back there to do today, so we can get them out to to the kids. Yep. No. We will uh, proceed with the worship. Now we will uh, have the lighting of the Advent candle, the, the third one. We hear it said that Christmas is for children. But I say to you that Christmas is for everyone. For those who have lived through many Christmases, for those whose hearts rejoice or weep at the thoughts of Christmas past, today we celebrate these beloved people, all God's beloved ones. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. This morning we light the third Advent calendar, Advent candle.
Now, will all who are able please rise and join with me in the responsive call to worship. Love has come down to us this Advent season. Love heals and transforms our lives. With great joy, we receive the love and share it with others. We open our hearts to all God's children, the last, the least, and the lost, as well as those who feel privileged. The Lord has done and continues to do great things for us. Praise be to God who loves us so much and who challenges us to be people of joy in this darkened world. Amen.
good. Okay, I have a question for you. Have you ever made a promise? Have you ever made a promise to someone? Oh, I bet you have. Yeah. So, what is a promise? Yeah, you're not going to tell anybody, right? Like, it's something that you tell someone or something that someone tells you. It's kind of a pact that you are not going to break, right? So, you hope that they're going to keep your promise or they're not going to break your promise, right? All right, so, grown-ups make a promise. Some grown-ups do whenever they get married, right? So, my wedding ring here, what shape is it? It's a circle, yeah. So, a circle is kind of cool because it doesn't end, does it? Yeah, it just keeps on going and going and going. It never ends. Kind of like a promise, right? Because our promise doesn't end. What else is a circle around the sanctuary? Joey? The, the wreath, yeah. Good, you picked out that wreath. Are there wreaths over there on our Advent table? Yeah. <clears throat> so our Advent wreath is a circle. Because God is making a promise to us. What promise is he making to us? What's going to happen? Who is he sending to us? Who's he sending? Jesus, good job. So that is the promise of Advent, right? We are waiting. We are waiting for that promise. So just like some grown-ups that make that promise, or you guys that make a promise to your friend, or God that makes the promise that Jesus is going to come, we have that promise we can remember, okay? So let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, God, for keeping your promise and sending us Jesus. Help us to trust you to keep all your promises to us. Amen. Now we will have our scripture readings. Our first scripture is Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 4, and 8 through 11. And that's on uh, page 620 and 621 in your pew Bible if you'd like to read along. The Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, and they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, And their, <laughs> excuse me, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are offspring of the Lord, that the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout before all nations. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 through 24. Rejoice always, praise without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. And our third reading is from John, first chapter, verse 6 through 8, and 19 through 24. And that's found on uh, page 886 in your pew Bible. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness before the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Well, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight a way for the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now that they have been sent from the Pharisees, they ask him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Good morning. Good morning. You all look like the weather. You look like you're about to go to sleep. Wake up. It's almost Christmas. Put some smiles on your faces. Put some smiles on your faces. That's better. Thank you. Good, like I said, good morning. <clears throat> Would you pray with me, please? God, we thank you for bringing us together to hear your word, to hear your message. Let it fall on open ears and open hearts and on people with smiles on their faces. Amen. Thank you, Glenn, this morning. Adam, thank you for your help. It's been a busy couple of weeks uh, around the Tucker household, around our household. So when that happens, you don't get the best of me. And when I have to do a sermon every week, you really don't get the best of me. But we'll get through this morning, and hopefully God will help in helping you find a message in this. So we're going to talk about John. Uh, the John scripture that um, Glenn just read. And let me read it to you in another way. We've got to get to the bottom of this. This wilderness prophet is causing great trouble to our people. He's disturbing them. Some say he might be Elijah or Moses or even our long-for Messiah. Hey, you, John, who are you? Are you Elijah or a prophet? Answer us. We have to get word back to the Pharisees. I am not any of those whom you are speaking. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make the pathway straight, just as the prophet Isaiah said. Well, you say so. But you're baptizing people here in the river. Do you think you are the Christ or something? Why do you baptize the people? Well, you have a lot to learn. 
I'm baptizing with water, but the one who is coming is far greater than I am. I am not even worthy to unbuckle the straps of his sandals. He is coming after me. Well, that's not much to take back to the authorities, at least what they want to hear. We're going to have to keep an eye on this guy. Yeah, you're right, he could be trouble. But I'm more interested in the kind of person he's talking about, the one who is greater than he is. That one is the troublemaker. Let's go back and tell the Pharisees what we've learned. <clears throat> do you like game shows? <clears throat> I do. As a matter of fact, I'm very grateful that Bob and I have separate TVs in separate rooms divided by the kitchen. So I don't have to listen to his YouTube videos of Warren Buffett. And he doesn't listen, have to listen to me yelling out answers on Jeopardy. So we're good that way. And it works well, doesn't it, Bob? Yep. Until we're watching the same thing and our televisions aren't quite synced so I can hear what his is doing, and it's just a little bit off from what mine's doing, but that's okay. Anyway, this whole passage from John reads like a game show, three game shows, as a matter of fact, with John the Baptist being the one that is questioned by a panel of celebrity judges, all trying to figure out who he is, what he's doing, and what it all means. Some of their questions prove better than others. Some of their questions are just ridiculous. So the first one it's like is to tell the truth. Remember to tell the truth? That's an oldie, but I remember watching it at, at some point. So you, I'm sorry? In black and white. In black and white. <laughs> well, that dates you, doesn't it? <laughs> Of course, I graduated with you, so. <laughs> to tell the truth, this panel of sort of famous celebrities would face three contestants, all three claiming to be the same individual. And they would stand there and say, my name is John the Baptist. My name is John the Baptist. My name is John the Baptist. All three would say the same name. And then there'd be a little synopsis, you know, uh, some, a few clues given about this person and their occupation. And the challenge was to see if these celebrities could determine which one was the real John the Baptist by asking questions. Now, these three contestants played their cards pretty close to their chest. They wouldn't reveal too much and wouldn't reveal any more than they were asked. It was funny to the extent that the questioners sometimes got befuddled and confused. And I can picture some of those celebrities in my mind, some of the women particularly, but I just do remember it. So this passage from John is funny in the same way. Celebrity questioners, people sent out by the Pharisees, the priests and the Levite, Levites, they're asking questions in turn and trying to figure out who John really is. Are you Elijah? Another prophet? An imposter? John plays it close to his chest, too. Of course, saying more of who he is not rather than who he is. 
that just leaves the questioners more confused. So at the end of this game show, the announcer would say, would the real John the Baptist stand up? And you remember, you know, one would start to stand and step back down, and another would start and step back down. And finally, the real person would stand, and everybody would gasp in shock. One can only imagine that the Pharisee pitched, if secretly, that someone would stand up and clear things up concerning John, announcing, I am John the Baptist. The next game show was another oldie called What's My Line? I don't remember this one well, but I kind of do. It was a variation on to tell the truth. And in this one, it was up to the panelists through questions to determine the occupation of one contestant who did his or her best to confuse the celebrity. The studio and TV audience would know what the panelists didn't. And that is the contestant's line. And the show was funny to the extent that the celebrities were off target and unable to see what, to us, was so obvious. If the contestant could keep them that way, well, he or she won money. The text from John today is funny in that same way. We know, we already know who John is. He's a witness sent to testify to the light, one who has come to proclaim the advent of the Savior, a prophet, in other words, after the fashion of Elijah, if not precisely Elijah himself. And the questioners in our text are very confused, unable to see, again, what we already know, unable to see what seems to us so obvious. They know something of what John is doing, but they don't know what it means, or more precisely, what his real job is. They're off target. Why are you baptizing? Who are you again? What would you say about yourself? And you get the sense that John's going to walk away with the money in the bag. He's already won the prize. The third game show is Jeopardy, and this one's still on, you know, hosted by Alex Trebek for years. And the last time I saw it, my MD Alec was, uh, was the host, and I guess there's been some controversy over who's supposed to host it. But of course, that one, <clears throat> excuse me, that one is where the host gives the answer, and the contestants supply the question. And your answer had to be in the form right, they would add to their money. And at the end, there was a final Jeopardy question where you could risk everything or nothing trying to increase your take-home pay, I guess. But John has given his question, questioners, I'm sorry, the final Jeopardy answer. But it would seem they got the question wrong. When John says, how did I do that? When John says, among you stands one whom you do not know. Their answer seems to be, where is the Messiah? Why in Bethany, of course, across the Jordan from where John was baptizing. But that's the wrong question. The real question is not, where is he that we might see him from? It is, who is he that we might follow him? One has to feel sorry 
for the celebrities, for the Levites. They seem to have missed the whole point, the grand prize. So I'm going to move on from there and really confuse you and let, give you something to think about how these two come together, I guess. Give you something to think about this afternoon. If there ever was a time when we needed to focus on justice, it's right now. We can no longer stick our heads in the sand and pretend everything is just fine because it isn't. Families are struggling just trying to make ends meet. Have you been to the store to buy groceries recently? Have you tried to buy a, a roast, a beef roast? You know, that, that it, it's just shocking how much groceries, how much gas, how much anything is. So families are struggling trying to make ends meet. Young people have always searched for meaning in their lives, but it seems now all they see around them is disillusionment and despair. The elderly, and I'm sorry, but that seems to be what most of us are. The young elderly, would that help? <laughs> the elderly face an uncertain future. I know that's that's a big question on my mind. What, what's going to happen to me or Bob? Um, you know, will we have enough money to last us until we die? We joke and say, Bob's going to go live with Hannah and I'll go live with Garnet. And that's a testament to how well we all get along. But... Um, <laughs> You know, I know that that's not a reasonable expectation of our daughters. So, you know, who's going to take all my stuff? Who's going to, what, what's going to happen to everything? Bob keeps adding dogs to the array. Who's going to take the dogs? I don't know. Just, there are a lot of questions as you get older. And you start to realize you're not going to live forever. But people are driven apart rather than united in a common good for all of creation. We're living in darkness. We're wandering around in the wilderness and we don't know where to go. And left to our own devices, we make a mess of most things. And here we are crying in despair. Where are you, God? And God weeps to his creation. There was another man wandering in the wilderness sent to the people in despair. He was sent by God as a messenger and his name was John. He proclaimed that God did indeed care about God's creation and God's people. Do not fear better is coming, coming. And the people cried, well, what shall we do? And John answered, prepare the way in the wilderness for the Lord. Turn again to God's way. Care for each other. Seek justice rather than idolatry. Focus on ways that we can all work in harmony rather than at cross purposes. Make Take a look at where you've been and how you have gotten to where you are. John came to testify to the light, the light of the world that is coming. Not that just came, but is coming. We need that light right now. And here we are, caught up in ribbons and 
paper and bows and all I can think about is today as I really need to go to Walmart to buy some wrapping paper. But we're caught up in that and tinsel and trees. And we turn a deaf ear to those who are truly in need. We need justice for those who feel they have no voice. John said, there is one who is coming who is the light. And what he will teach us is a new way to live. Things will be challenged. Things will be changed. But all God's people will learn to live in cooperation and compassion, in harmony and hope. This Christmas, as we gaze on those drawn to the manger to witness the incarnation of God in Christ, may we see the children that no one wants, the abused ones beaten by angry people, the older ones who see uncertain futures, the haughty and arrogant know-it-alls, the still wise and faithful. May we see those and know that God has come among us. The light is shining in our darkness, and we, as hard as we try, we cannot extinguish it. God is doing a new thing, and we are called to be a part of it. Let the light of justice for all God's people shine on you, in you, and through you this season and in all your days. Amen. Our hymn is number two, Come Thou Almighty King, verses one, two, and four. If you would stand.